In a new investigation, Ricochet examined the current status, investment activity, and planned lifespans of Canada's carbon bombs, and we compared this data to see how federal climate plans are stacking up against the actual science. So what is a carbon bomb? It's a massive fossil fuel extraction project that will generate more than a billion tons of greenhouse gas emissions, or one gigaton. Canada has 12 of them, three coal mines, five oil sands projects, and four shale deposits that mostly produce fracked methane gas. Nine of the 12 carbon bombs are currently in operation and produce the equivalent of 1.2 billion barrels of oil every year, and they're slated to double production over the next two decades. Barrels of oil equivalent, or BOE, is a metric used to measure the energy output from different fossil fuel sources. When burned, the greenhouse gas emissions emitted from one BOE is equal to roughly 400 kilograms of CO2, depending on the material and extraction process used. 91.8 billion barrels of oil equivalent, which is over half of Canada's total proven fossil fuel reserves, is bound up in these 12 carbon bomb sites. Collectively, they have the potential to emit a whopping 39 gigatons of greenhouse gases. This is the equivalent of roughly 60 years of domestic emissions at current levels and would exceed our Paris Agreement targets by 800%. Emissions from these 12 carbon bombs alone would eat up 10% of the remaining global carbon budget needed to limit temperature rise to 1.5 degrees. The planet has already spent 25% of this budget over the past three years. The math doesn't add up. Here's what science says needs to happen. Put all existing carbon bombs into harvest mode and cancel all projects currently in development and dramatically reduce global supplies of all fossil fuels immediately. Instead of listening to these dire warnings, the Canadian government focuses on measures that incrementally reduce the demand for fossil fuels. But the reduction agreement targets fall far short of what the science is demanding that we do. Language loopholes in these agreements exclude downstream emissions or emissions from our exported fossil fuels that are burned in other countries. This isn't included in the national carbon accounting. So Canadians are not getting the full picture of what's going on. The government is clearly banking on supplying the world with fossil fuels well past 2050. So if global efforts succeed in reducing consumption, Canada is going to be left with a lot of unused infrastructure, leaving taxpayers, workers, and communities on the hook. A successful cut in global demand would also lead to carbon leakage. That's if demand for fossil fuels decline and the price also declines if output is not reduced. So it's worth asking the question, does the government expect the climate movement to fail? Science tells us that leaving fossil fuels in the ground is the only way to prevent a catastrophic rise in global temperature. For every barrel of oil Canada leaves in the ground, global consumption decreases by half. Diffusing these carbon bombs is not only pragmatic, but an economic and moral responsibility. This country is one of the world's top emitters and has contributed disproportionately to the climate crisis. The tar sands have been rated the dirtiest oil in the world to extract, and the UN has repeatedly condemned the use of force against indigenous land defenders. As a G7 country, we are financially well positioned to take this hit, but the government seems set on blowing up these carbon bombs, which doesn't just undermine Canada's global commitments, it puts humanity on a disastrous path.